How do you guys feel about the existence of Pandora? A part of me feels like Rezero's gonna get even more crazier because with the schizo theories that's possible, with her powers of just rewriting memories, like restructuring memories for Amelia, or just making people see illusions and it never really happened, it's kind of reminiscent of like Aizen from Bleach, where you can basically see all the shit happening and the audience can see exactly what's happening, but the author can be like, huh. Since when were you under the assumption that what you were seeing was reality? I feel like they could do that kind of fucking crazy bullshit too. Who exactly is Pandora? I don't know. She's a witch of vanity. She seems to be the end boss. And I'm starting to think now that Pandora gaslit Satala, showed her a bunch of like fraudulent illusions. And that's how like Satala went crazy and, you know, um, consumed the other witches and ravaged the world. I think at the end of the day, Pandora is the master puppeteer doing everything. And the Witch of Envy is an unfortunate byproduct of Pandora. There's also a lot of interesting foreshadowing that's happened in Season 1, Episode 15, where Juice literally says, You killed her with your own hands, right? You killed her when we were doing Twister with Rem. And we saw that Juice literally killed Fortuna because of Pandora's illusion-like abilities, right? It's just like, damn, that is so sad. Who is Puck is another question I have. We made a meme guess of how Fortuna could be Puck because of the simple name of Leah. But if you think about it, I think that Puck existed pre-Calamity times, meaning 400 years back. How else would a Puck refer to? You need at least half the shadows, you know, to compete with me of what Satala could do. Remember, there was that one run where Juice died by Puck, right? So this hints that potentially it's like pre-Calamity days when Satala existed. Or maybe... Is that possible? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. A part of me feels like it could be Fortuna's dad. Wouldn't it be crazy if Fortuna's dad is actually Puck? I'm just trying to make some fucking crazy guesses. And who is Amelia's mom? Amelia's mom is Minerva. You know why? I don't know. <laughs> there is no logic. A kid that just said that the fucking seal at that place is supposed to be Minerva's fucking graveyard. It's one of his theories. I'm like, what? How could you as an enemy only ever come up with that fucking logic? But clearly he's right ahead. So I'm like... Now, my goal is to work backwards. Just anytime Minerva is there or there's, they ever mention her, I'm gonna always try to figure out how does this relate to Amelia. Let's begin today's reaction. Roswell. What's going on, man? He's new in Roswell. First time meeting. Yeah, it was said, right? In the part one of season two, that Roswell pretty much just like fell in love with a kid in that first sight 400 years ago, which is this. And this is not Roswell L. Mathers. This is like Roswell A. Mathers. What letter of the alphabet reincarnation or sorry, um, possessions are we on right now? Oh, oh, that's a lot of tongue. Oh, is that necessary to help heal him? Cut the spit. So hold up. <clears throat> let's, let's, let's break some stuff down here, okay? Roswell is backed up. Roswell has a lot of mana. He's got a lot of... His pipes are very backed up, okay? He doesn't know how to... Release. Echidna shows up and teaches Roswell <laughs> how to release for the first time. <laughs> He's 16, by the way. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so basically, Echidna just teach, taught Roswell how to jack off, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> hey, what was that kiss, bro? What was that kiss? At this point, I'm not sure if Echidna is the Witch of Greed. Like, I don't know when the fuck that happens, but if she is, then. Is Roswell at this point now an apostle of greed? This kissing animation went fucking crazy, bro. What in the hell? Yeah, this is... Echidna is 19. I think she's presumably 19 because that's when, like, she died from, like, the Witch of Envy. And, like, this is, like, the year where, like, the calamity shit happens, I guess. Suck the mana out, man. That's what that kiss was. Magic release, period.
Roswell just hit that age, you know, boys, you know, their hormones start gr going crazy and, and, you know, at, at age, they, they just get backed up and sometimes you, you need a hot 19 year old fucking older sister to suck that shit out of you. That's what this is happening. This is exactly what's happening right now. Mm. Because Roswell is magically talented. Mm. Finally, someone I can relate to. That's why Roswell's infatuated with Echidna. Okay, so at this point, she is the Witch of Greed Echidna. Roswell. Betty don't care. And this slice of life music playing during this slice of life moment, it's so wholesome. Ryu's also just happy to be there. Betty and Roswell just bantering, just the good old time. ベアトリー様、そんな言い方をされてはある様のお気持ちは私にもわかります。問われた一人ですから。She because after this, we know that like Roswell most likely just possesses the next like generation and just changes his middle name at, to an alphabet, right? Instead of Roswell like K Mathers, he's now Roswell L Mathers. But right now, he said he bested his parents and siblings to overtake the Mathers family. So maybe this like rules and custom didn't exist until this Roswell. <laughs> <laughs> be cool, we're just fucking contradicting ourselves, just being so sin today. Ryuzu being the neutral judge, just calling her out, and Biku can't do anything about it. Oh. Really? Mother. What's up? They were definitely fighting. Happy times. Oh, and this must be the backstory that Ryuzu was telling us, right? The reason why the sanctuary was made. But to us, that secret kind of just got off screen. So now we're getting piece by piece while talking to Roswell about it. Got it. What happens? Remember, too much slice of life, a life is about to get sliced. What happened? Uh oh. You know what's crazy about ReZero? There has never been a shameless panty shot. And I really respect this author and the anime studio doing this. I cannot think of one unnecessary fan service moment in this show. Never. Maybe that one time when Regulus looked back and Pandora was there with their fucking poncho pretty much half just open in the air, but that wasn't even then nothing was really shown. Like this show just straight up just refuses to do degenerate fan service and I really do appreciate that. <laughs> Hey, her door passing. That's fucked up. Just a bit of yin magic, I suppose. Yin and yang is the light and darkness, right? Betty is a dark magic user, yin is dark. So basically, Betty just uses Ryuzu, just made her stuck in like an infinite passage of fucking doorways. That's fucked up. That's messed up, Betty. Just a little bit? Ryuzu was terrified. <laughs> Betty, come on! Huh? Yang. <laughs> the opposite, yin yang. Okay. Okay. It's kind of making more sense why Roswell is the greatest magician in Lugunika Kingdom, right? Because not only does he have a good upbringing with his family, right? But also, being taught by the Witch of Greed, that's pretty crazy. 
Oh, also, not just beyond like being born into a good family, right? He literally is like special where his like overflow of mana was a problem until like Kidna solved it, which is probably not an issue for the rest of his siblings. So he's just super, super talented and has the best teacher ever. Yeah, and plus for 400 years, right? Not only because this is not the end of Roswell. For 400 years, he's been just, just making new kids and just making jumping and jumping. And also, um, I have a crackpot theory. You ready for this shit? It's after a kidnap mentioned that Roswell had, had heterochromia, which is like, oh yeah, you're right. He's true. In the, in the past, he, he didn't have it. So my theory. <laughs> Let me get some pictures out. <laughs> it's, really, it's a really simple theory based on the eye colors. Uh, we're going to need uh, Roswell's colors first. We're going to read zero, right? What is his eye color? If you look at it, it is... Bada bing, bada boom, look at that, right? Blue and gold, right? Blue and gold, right now? Roswell only has blue and blue. Now, who has the other eye color, I wonder? And you already know who I'm about to fucking bring up, right? Where is he, where is he, where is he? Oh, there he is. Let's open this image in the new tab and bada bing. So my theory is, at a certain point in time, Roswell decided to fuck Regulus, and their kid is Roswell L. Mather. <laughs> I don't know if it's actually his kid, but somewhere, right? Because, like, because, like, this dude is super old, too. Like, 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 Regulus is super old, right? He doesn't seem to really change his youthfulness throughout these hundreds of years. So I think at a certain point, Roswell intentionally took back shots from Regulus, and... Uh, at, a, at a different time and point, Roswell L. Mathers was born with this <laughs> Why? I don't know. Maybe there's like uh, benefits. If you have like an offspring with like a super powerful person, you get like inheritance powers. I still don't know how blessings or divine protections are really like handed down. But <laughs> yep, that's, that's my theory. That's my theory. Just off of eye colors, guys. I just I think you just want to do that for fun. Mm -hmm. I love their whole dynamic where like Biko is a very spoiled brat and she kind of pushes it too 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 far and Roswell is just kind of like there kind of like taunting Betty and entertaining her. But always the discourse goes to this neutral judge of Ryuzu and Betty's like, come on, take my side, Kashira, please, Kashira. And Ryuzu just, just nah, nah, you kind of trash right now, Roswell's right. <laughs> mm, There's a lot of book covers. Is this some important book or does this shit not matter? I fear, I swear I've seen this book from Biko's Hidden Library. I'm schizo. <laughs> Alright, things have been way too happy. Things have been way too happy. Slice of life. Alright, life's about to get sliced any moment now. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> I've been waiting. This is it. This is fucking it. Let's go. What's going on, Vico? Uh oh, uh oh. Mom's calling. Uh oh, uh oh. He? Who's he? The hell outfit is this? Never seen his ass before. Huh? It looks like a clown outfit, it does. Our plan? What plan do we have? So their plans were to create the sanctuary, but we still don't know exactly why they created it, but that's what their plans were. Yeah, that racist barrier. 
<laughs> and him showing up now is terrible because he'll just kill everything? Ryuzu is the core. See, I thought that a kid that just used this girl for her immortality experiment, but it kind of goes beyond that. And it's also for the barrier. Okay. You know, when this soundtrack plays, nothing could ever happen. Okay. But like, why are they gathering a bunch of human people, like mixed blood people here, right? There is no ordinary barrier. We spent years gathering people with mixed human and demi blood. Why? What kind of fucking social experiment is this? But if you think about the Lugunika history, there was a great demi-human war, right? At some point in history, Teresa von Austria was an integral part of that war, right? Like demi-humans and humans were fighting a lot of like tensions with racism, with human superiority and demi-human superiority. Demi-humans lost because of Teresia and they had the whole sort same banquet shit that we saw, I think. This is like kind of for them, for like, the demi-humans and mixed blood people that are going to be discriminated to just like live here in the sanctuary. It's like a safe space just for them. But why? Also, very true. That shit is way further down in the future. A demi-human war doesn't even happen until like much, much, much later on. So that makes no sense. Why are they created? Why is... Why? I don't know. Yeah, who's showing up? Why is he so like, deadly? <laughs> Poor Ryuzu. Yeah, I mean, there seems to be existing racism back then, right? Without being ostracized or looked down upon. So even if the demi human war and shit didn't happen just yet, maybe it's still so bad back then that they needed a reason to create a sanctuary. The current threat. And when the sanctuary will be set? Okay. The current threat of the guy that's approaching? Buy some time to construct the Maybe that's the intention. And we never see a kid in his face. You know what I'm thinking right now, right? Do I even have to tell you what I'm thinking? You know how I think. What do you think I'm thinking? See, I think that Echidna... Listen, let's just assume that this isn't Pandora, because the, the existence of Pandora makes it so bullshit that we can just call anyone Pandora. But like, let's just assume that it's a kid. I think that this is all manipulation. Oh, we must do everything for a mother. She saved us. She gave us a reason to live. I think that she knew from the beginning exactly what took to make the fucking sanctuary or construct the barrier. And I think that this bitch is fucking manipulating and gaslighting these kids. And they're acting as we're do, we're do, like we're doing her a favor. No, 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 no. It's it's very interesting how we can never see her face the entire time too. If this is Pandora, right? Again, I anyone can be Pandora. That's that's the thing I don't like about Pandora because now you can literally just say, oh, that's Pandora. Oh, that's Pandora. But if we just assume that this is a kid, no, I think that this is some next level fucking Ionokoji classroom of the elite manipulation going on right now. Everything for the sake of her knowledge and research, right? Poor Ryuzu. 
And she didn't even get one day with Bieko teaching her as a sensei, man. Sad. But what did you expect? That much slice of life happening? You know only things can be bad. What the hell? Never seen this guy before. He's not an elf. He's got regular ears. But his outfit honestly reminds me of the current Roswell. It's very clown-ish. Right? Just looking at his this drip. Well, I think the outer mantle, I don't know. There's like a square in the middle, another square that's 45 degrees and pushing that positioned out. Just looking at the frills, the old world drip, it kind of reminds me of Roswell. Well, I don't know. What the why? Why does he resemble? Yeah, maybe Roswell saw his drip was sick and wanted to copy it after. Who are you? Who are you? This is right in the soundtrack. Invisible hands or what? I see invisible impacts happening, right? Like, look at that. Hmm. Is this an archbishop of something? I don't think this is a witch because only girls can be witches, right? I don't know. Is this... I don't know. Yeah, it does kind of... I don't think this is really Regulus' powers. Well, we also know that every authority, like, adapts and changes. But to the person's desires and personality. But we, we have a fun theory where one commenter said, like, the sloth factor never changes to anybody. Everyone has the unseen end because they're all... Because a, a sloth is far, lazy as fuck. But this does seemingly look like Sekhmet's kind of powers, right? Bro doesn't want to fight. This guy's next level. What is that like glowing around him? Is it just like an aura effect? I don't know, but he is extremely powerful, and I'm thinking like this does just look like unseen hand the more I look at it, but maybe it's something completely different that we haven't seen yet. I mean, it's said that Reinhardt's, you know, when he first used Excalibur, whenever mana, like, gathers so much, it's as if, like, the space starts to distort. And that is the effects that I'm seeing right now. So maybe this is such an incredibly powerful person where the mana is literally just accumulating around him. That's the pure aura, and the space is distorting. What the hell? He just fucking fists the fire. Okay, I mean, he also says getting sweaty annoys me so much. It sounds like he's a very tiresome and lazy guy that can't be bothered. So like, Taida, right? Sloth personality kind of fits to him. <laughs> okay, so vainglory slash vanity. And melancholy were told to be the two extra sins that I didn't even know existed beyond the seven deadly sins. But this is a warlock. Okay, okay. So it does exist, melancholy. But it's a warlock. Warlock is a male witch. So now we can assume in the past that there could have been not only witches, but warlocks as well. <laughs> but a warlock of melancholy has. A power similar to the authority of sloth and has a personality trait with it? Or may does is it like how like vanity or vain eventually turns into pride? Did melancholy also like turn into sloth or something? Or am I trying to reach too much with like him trying to be sloth? Maybe it has nothing to do with it and he's just melancholic person. <laughs> melancholy is removed and replaced with sloth in real life because similarities. All right, all right, then this whole Taita invisible hand shit is still on board then. Nice, nice, nice. Hmm. Hector. 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 Hector isn't willing to debate. Hector just says, damn, bro, you right. You called me out. Shit. Oh, 
間に合ったと思うなげに時間稼ぎを果たしたさ That was the intention. The last hope. There's a speech pattern. Yeah, yeah. There was the other example before too, but this is 100%. Now, that's a, that's a repeat. This is not an excuse. Okay. Hector and Roswell seems to have merged. Hector's drip and Hector's speech pattern. And Roswell's just body. What the hell is going on here? What is the similarities between these two, bro? What is happening right now? Maybe just took inspiration. They used to hang out? Okay. Alright, time to become the core. Bye, Ryuzu. Took a core. Biku, chill. This is our last moment. Okay, Biku has no idea. I thought Biku was literally like, come on, hurry up, Kashira. You're gonna be a sacrifice, right, Kashira? Stop looking at it, Kashira. Do something. <laughs> Biku has no clue what's about to happen. Because her words are law. It's mother. Even after this? Because, like, Betty right now is a poor, innocent child that has no idea that her mom is an evil witch. So far, everything has been fine, right? But I don't think she truly understands what a kidna is really like until now. Yeah, she will work hard for all of eternity. Stuck in the fucking crystal, naked, in a fetal position. All for your mother's research. Ryuzu, no! Oh, he cried. Man, what the hell is up with Echidna and Butterfly? Why do you think Echidna loves butterflies so much to the point where Biaku has butterflies in her eyes? But also, this fucking thing, also, basically, this X is supposed to be a butterfly in the hidden library, too. She loves this. The opening, Echidna just fucking whoosh, with the green butterflies as well. Now, the only thing that I can connect butterflies to a kid as like personality traits or ambitions is like the butterfly effect in relations to how much a kid now wanted to use Subaru's powers for to go to the completionism route. But if you do that, there's implications that if you, you know, change stuff in the past and something, no, nah, that doesn't really line up. I'm basically trying to say like maybe there's some sort of like time, time travel inconsistencies and different possibilities in the kidna like liking that shit. But other than that, I have no clue what the butterflies kind of imply, other than just the butterfly effect. Biaku <sighs> don't know. This is it, Biaku. Forever. You can't. If that man is interfering, I'll. That's what the sanctuary is for. So it sounded like the buildup of the sanctuary is not really a safe space for like demi humans and mixed species. For, you know, it's like a safe space. But to keep Hector out? Because the warlock of melancholy is mixed blooded? I don't know. Maybe there can be more than one meaning, but it sounds like Hector is a menace and like he is a big threat back then. Huh. It's like a bunker from Hector. The core, bro. Ryuzu, she gonna go in there. Yeah. Your mom is fucked up. Too late. And even if mother does dote on Betty, 
I don't think Mother would accept Betty's words here. I don't know. I, I, again, I just don't think Biko under truly understand what her mother is really like. This is just sad. Mm. That's true. あんまり大勢だとペティも大変だけどよ。好きを見てロズワールを拾ってお母様も連れ来れで。そうやって逃げてまた会おうか。エキドナ様やロズワール様のお願いの地。それを捨ててまた後どのくらいかかるんでしょ
he just got his ass beat so much by Hector that he's like, damn, he's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm just going to start being like him. Now, Hector didn't wear makeup, but... Ugh. You guys are way too fucking schizo with the Super Bowl theories. There's no single logic. This is the extent of the logic being presented on why Hector is actually Subaru. Wow, look at his eyes. He looks so worn down. It must be Subaru. Like, come on. Is this the best you can do? Listen, I'm willing to entertain theories, but just give me a little bit more. Like, you see this one frame of him being worn down with the hair slightly up, and you're like, oh my god, it's Subaru. I knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> I don't really think so. I don't really think so. But, um, I don't know. He doesn't really have the eye color that matches. Like, I'm not going to say that <laughs> fucking it Roswell and Hector fucked and had a kid. I don't think that's even biologically possible. <sighs> but why? Why did you copy his drip? Why did you copy his speech pattern? What is up with Hector that Roswell just decided to be like him? I have no clue other than it's some sort of adoration. Maybe Hector and Echidna's relationships back in the day. I don't know. I don't know, man. To never forget him? <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> like, you deem this one person to be your enemy for life, and then you decide to copy a speech pattern and wear clothing just like him to remind yourself never to forget. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that, but... <sighs> we'll have to theory craft and be cut content videos. Maybe there's more information out there. <laughs> And the best part, assuming that story is true, <laughs> would think this is the Pandora, bro. Like, who's to say? Maybe this is Pandora, man. Oh my god. See what I mean? This is the reason I hate and love Pandora. Because you can do some bullshit every fucking time. Just insert Pandora and whenever it suits your needs. Or whenever, so whenever you just want to just fucking retcon shit, it's just like, it was all an illusion. Oh my god. Nope, make me. <laughs> this motherfucker. Clown あれだけ異性今やスバル君と愉快な仲間たちの一員の周りの速さには驚かされるよ。カリーナロゼル。カルイ。出てきた思い。それを絶やす手放す君が私に軽い。No, that was a that wasn't even a dream. That was a misguided, misinformed commitment we had that has been liberated after we overcame our trauma. Nah, nah. You could literally say, I changed my mind because I love my mother and family. That's the thing with these shows like this, right? Similar to Phase Zero, where you're always showing two separate dichotomies of a single position of like the idealistic path and the super fucking doomer path. Like you can just immediately reverse the script and say, no, it's because I love my mother and my family that I decided to let it go and move forward. Just a second. Bro, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, bro, like. Bro, it's uncanny how much those eyes match, right? Like, it's crazy. Like, listen, I just talked about how Hector, I just laughed at you guys by saying, oh my god, Hector and Subaru, ooh, they look the same. Okay, I, I, for sure I concede, but like, come on, come on. At what point did he become heterochromatic? After he took back shots from Ross, fucking, you know, Regulus? You, you want to create this? Oh shit, bro, you ready for this? You ready for this? Regulus is known to have many wives, right? Oh fuck, yo, was Roswell at a certain point a wife of Regulus's? Why not? Why not? Oh, dude. That's right. 
I don't think it, yeah, you had it in you to put, you know, Roswell in his place with words, but very well said. That's right. <laughs> Let's go, Garfield. You give my girlfriend head pats at night and do weird sussy things to her forehead, you groomer. Nice one. They're proud. The boys are proud. <laughs> I love lines like this. He changed without ever changing. Does this compete with the fate lines of like people are dead when they are killed? Come on, Roswell. Damn, bro, he really just calling us out like that, but he's not really wrong. I mean, we have invisible providence and we have returned by death, but if you kind of remove those, we seemingly are very ordinary, but I guess Roswell will not be swayed until we absolutely crush him in this arc, right? Because he's still hung, hanging on to his game plan from his grimoire. And until we prove him, like, we can clear this shit. Like, he's gonna just, like, defy us. So we beat his ass. And then next arc, he'll be like, shit, you know what? You did all that shit while I still wasn't helping you out? Bet, I'm joining your side. This is what happens when you tell a Genshin Impact or any gacha game player that's invested 400 plus dollars into the game and says, Do you know how much money I put into this fucking game? I can't fucking back out now? Do you understand what I've put in my entire life? 400 years! So it's obviously hard for him to just like, you know, be swayed by a Subaru like that, but... He's too deep in, right? Roswell has just invested way too much fucking into the game and he can't back out until we force him to back out. But I think there's a lot of projection here going on with like, in the sanctuary, no one can violate the feelings carved into you by time. What else? Yeah, you are less than normal. Can you do? I feel like there's a lot of failures that Roswell had in the past that he has like decided that the only way to overcome these failures is with my ideology of like sacrificing everything and just folk devoting my life into one single thing and that's what he's been doing for 400 years and now that he's been confronted with different options he doesn't know how to take it but deep inside maybe he realizes that hey maybe it's time for me to confront my past too less than ordinary technically <laughs> Truly the duality of man, right? It's like the pessimist versus the optimist. A person that desire that like believes in the power of friendship, Subaru. And the person that believes in their own independent values that they don't need anybody. But at the end of the day, I feel like most people that turn into like Roswell are people that are afraid of abandonment and have decided that like I can only do things by myself. I think that it's compelling this ideology of like Sigma grind and just like putting your head down and devoting yourself to one cause and you know just trying your best by your heart. But like it doesn't mean that it, it doesn't mean that you can't receive help. I feel like there's a halfway point. There's got to be a halfway point that we can compromise on right now. Maybe because he didn't think like this, he quote unquote lost a kidna to Hector and blah blah blah, and that's why his conviction is so strong. A kidna. Yeah, that's great. Hold on. How much time did they actually spend together? Less than a year? How long was those memories from when Echidna like made Roswell bust until Roswell was a meat shield? That's crazy that he has dedicated 400, like he's figured out a way to send himself to the future generations with the possessions. 
he is simping for a girl that he's met for less than a fucking year, maybe. Like, this is not more than five years, right? Like, holy shit. A kid... <laughs> It's, 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 what's more impressive? Roswell's dedication for a girl after simping for like less than a year? Or a kid that's capability to groom this child to, to make him like devote the next 400 years of his life for her? I think both are really impressive. Like, god damn, bro. But like, to be fair, right? If we just stop joking around for a bit, it does make sense. It's not the amount of time, but rather what Echidna did for Roswell. Roswell was this super powerful mage from a really powerful family, but even his siblings and parents could not understand him. His overflowing of mana, only one person truly understood him, kissed, right? He kissed her and then she kissed him. And basically he was like, wow, there's someone that actually understands me that I can relate to. And it's like finding like hope for the first time that someone actually understands me. That, that's, just, that's like a huge deal. <laughs> We'll see about that. One crucial person. That person is I've never seen a girl who sucked that bad at crying, Amelia. She's cried a lot. And every, every time it's been so fucking sad, but damn, bro. Amelia is just so trash at everything. She even sucks at fucking crying. That's insane. Mm. And that's super right. Not only has he wiped away Amelia's tears, you know, Satala's too. Damn, this might be the most epic pose so far. Holy shit. I would have never expected during this heated the moment conversation you would do this fucking pose. But with the soundtrack happening right now, with the conviction he's going, this might be the coolest fucking pose so far. Yeah. Self proclaimed, but it's okay. Roswell's gonna knight this motherfucker when we get out of here, bro. Because that's how confident Roswell was. Okay, I just, I'm not even thinking about this moment right now because I'm thinking about that pose and how funny it's going to be in season three because season three is going to be like an all out war, right? So I'm thinking, I'm thinking this. Natsuki Subaru? Okay, there's, there's two sides, right? Even, even the promotional picture, you have like the good side and the bad side. So this is what I'm fucking thinking, bro. Natsuki Subaru, like everyone's going to do a standoff. And just before the battle starts, Subaru will be like, it's time! <laughs> and, be, and that's how the fucking war starts, bro. That'd be fucking crazy. Let's go. She's going past the trials. Subawa. True. 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 Man, there is, it is uncanny though, huh? This like overlay of both sides, right? The Subo Wall theory enjoyers are going fucking crazy right now. I think that the Subo Wall theory is funny, but beyond just like them being the actual same person, at, at the end of the day, it's simply Tape writing like it's like two sides of the same coin like is this literally not two sides of the same coin where there's similarities but the way that approach things is so fucking opposite right there is a lot of similarities in the way that they project their ideals onto each other but at the end of the day Subaru and Roswell they're supposed to be literally two sides of the same coin rather than being the actual same person Roswell is a foil to Subaru Maybe the other way around. I honestly don't completely understand what a foil is, so I probably shouldn't talk about it. But like, yes, I will agree. So what do you think happens now? Roswell? Everyone leaves? 
Fred's roll. Do you think he just stands there or do he just sits back in bed? <laughs> what, what does he do? He put his all clown makeup and dress up just for Subaru's meeting. That's what he was told to do. Now what? <laughs> What's he fucking do? That, that's what I always love thinking about in anime. Basically, we have like a super hype scene, then we leave, but it's just like, now what did they do? I don't know. Rosal's probably looking as a grimoire. And it's not over yet, though. Oh! Yo! Today's episode title is The Beginning of the Sanctuary and the Beginning of the End. Kind of similar to the beginning of the end and the end of the beginning, but... Okay. Amelia? You good? Yes. Nice. What you know? Rama. <laughs> what the fuck? That's it? I was expecting like more. What the hell? It says Amelia getting up and around saying hello, but okay. Last <laughs> today's episode of ReZero. Hmm. I think that the most important shit is probably this first half, right? Hector, Warlock of Melancholy. For some reason, we still don't really understand the specifics of like why the sanctuary is built, right? We understand how it was built by using by a kid that basically grooming these poor kids and then having them basically be sacrifices and reuse would be the core, right? But ugh, Hector, man, do you think that a kid? I, I don't know. I don't think Hector and Echidna are necessarily working together. I think that Echidna simply understood that Hector would be coming no matter what, and it creates this um, situation where Ryuzu is going to have to sacrifice herself. But very interesting that throughout the entirety of the episode, we were never once shown Echidna's face to hint that. She's got some other things going on. She's manipulating everybody, and it's by just removing the eyes out. Because if you can see it, who knows how she's acting, huh? Roswell, <laughs> bro, literally got... <laughs> he knew a girl for, like, less than a year, I'm assuming. Maybe it's not quite the case. But then for 400 years, he committed to her. That is a fucking insane thing to do. But we know that Roswell is insane. We also know that his eye color, you know, it was not the same as right now. Heterochromia kicked in sometime. And we also know that for 400 years, this human mage has been jumping one body to another. I don't even know if he's truly human. I don't know. But he's basically taking one Roswell to the next. And I think this is like the beginning of the Roswell fucking dynasty. Ryuzu and Biko scene. Man, this was so sad. It was such a sentimental moment as Biko didn't even exactly know what it meant for Ryuzu to be here, right? Because at the end of the day, mother's words are absolute. But I think Biko starts to realize that maybe mom is a fucking manipulative psychopath that doesn't have the best interest for me and might even lock me up in a fucking library with the promise that will never happen, right? It's just so sad. This is the first time that, like, Biko realizes that people will leave her because, you know, juice, so you've left me too, so Ryuzu leaving sad man but i hope that there's potential in the future where we save the mansion and liberate the sanctuary and these two can kind of reunite maybe not as the same exact people but still you know at least the feelings will be there and then this part oh, super and roswell they're clashing they are fucking absolutely clashing and the funniest part is how super can talk all this shit in front of roswell and roswell can't really just fucking you know just fucking do this Psychopath? More like it's the nature of her being. So you're telling me that the nature of her being is being a psychopath. Like, do you think that you just got me there? You and I are still in the conclusion that she is a fucking witch and she is a psychopath. Regardless of that, it's a nature. Like, that doesn't change anything, bro. And right now, between Subaru and Roswell, Who's gonna win? I think that we have to win, right? We don't have much fucking episodes left. Season 3 is coming up in a fucking week, bro. We can't be fucking around. There's no time for another loop to happen. So, Ross is gonna continue to a script. We're gonna continue with our script. Amelia has cleared the trial and things are looking better than ever. All that matters is, you know, how are we gonna take care of the mansion with Elsa and shit? What would Garfield with us now? Maybe even Roswell will show up with us. We got some additional firepower to fight them, but that's it for me. If you're still here, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for even more content. And until next time, take care.